Hello there and welcome to How To YouTube. A series about all the tools I use on a daily basis on how to actually do YouTube when recording and stuff. Today is episode six and we're talking about the profiles and the scene collections. These are very, very useful. So, scene collections. Um, down here we've got scenes, we've got main, start and end, we treated those before, we got that one, we got that one, yay! And we got that one there. Very, very useful for doing that. Now that's great, that's great for like a, doing, doing live streams, I've got my start and my end and my main, but what if I want to have a separate one for say, just doing YouTube recordings? Don't want it all to be the same, do we? Well, here we go. Give me a new collection, we'll call this one. YouTube. Did we still that right? I did, hey! Immediately, all the sources are gone, all the scenes are gone, we've got a blank scene to start with. Here we can say, have me a brand new video capture device. All capture devices are gone. The camera, camera two now. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we can say back into all the setup we did before, we can do it all again. If you don't want to do all the setup again, that is fine as well. Scene collections, uh, we'll remove the YouTube one, go away. And we'll move back to our default one. And we can say duplicate. Hey, YouTube. We're now on the scene YouTube. We have both, the default and YouTube is there. We can say, actually, I don't need the start one. That can, that can be deleted. I don't need the end one. That can also be deleted. I have my main scene. I have all my stuff in here. I don't need the Streamlabs because we don't need that in YouTube. Uh, my logo up there, you don't need that. Because no, when you're on YouTube, you put the logo down there automatically. So I don't even need the logo. That can go away. Uh, I can only keep my, I don't keep my monitor captures. I don't keep my game captures. I don't keep my camera. So I want to keep all the main aspects of what I want to do for YouTube in that scene there, done. Now I might also say here, actually can I have another scene for um, um, chatting? And here I want to have my camera only. Capture device, camera, me, hi. Nice and center, make it bigger, there we go. And because it's all boring like that, give me a, you know what, let's do it this way. Give me a, a single image, this image will be the logog. Yeah, why not logog? Logog for everybody. Give me that, give me that, give me that. Then here we'll say, we'll have the big border logo, boom, there, hi. And we'll also have, just, I'm just putting some random images up. Um, twitching, we'll use a Twitch image as well. Uh, image icons, that'd be the Twitch logo. No, not them ones. The service logos, I called them. Twitch. Give me the... Which ones are they? Oh, the... Give me that one, the white one. I want the white one because I'm using the black background. Ooh. So we just sort of moving these around, making them all go where they're supposed to go. Twitch one can go there. My personal logo stays where it is, but it can go behind the camera. Maybe like that. Uh, we'll add the, so I'm just setting up like a, a, let's have a chat one. So we got the YouTube logo. Uh, it should be around here somewhere. YouTube logo, full color, boom. Unfortunately for YouTube, it has a black U. There you go. YouTube. <laughs> that is unfortunate for YouTube. We can sort that out in a second. And then for example, we can go image, Patreon and upper level because I believe they're just sat there. Boom, Patreon, done. You can shrink down as well because you're way too big and you go there. But there you go, we've got YouTube's logo. Unfortunately, it is a little bit uh, blocked out by that background beam container black. So what we can do then is say, actually, let's add in a new image. Let's do it as a sideshow. Uh, no, actually, there we go. So we've got YouTube there, but we'll put that there. <laughs> So we've got the YouTube logo, we've got the Patreon logo, we've got the Twitch logos. They're all added up there. They're all good. I put my hand up there. You can just make out the U for YouTube. <laughs> so they're all in places we can have a chat. Nice. Have a little chat about channel affairs. You know, all that normal stuff. And we have that one there for uh, for the recording. So that's all. That's, that's your scenes. That's great. But I want to go back to my live stream. So I want to go back to my default one. Boom. Back to default. Got my main. I've got my start. I've got my end. So I've got all the ones I need for my live streaming. Here, I've got the ones I need for my YouTubing over here, which are great, they're amazing. And I can just have entire scene set up, scene collection set up, depending on what I want to do with the way we're doing something. So uh, if I go back to it, well, we, can have a, we have a chat on our YouTube channel. Hi, how are you doing guys? We go back to our Twitch channel, we drop over here. 
and we, we do the start videos, start stream soon. So we can jump between the collections, see how collections can be very useful. I use one collection for my my Twitch live streams and another collection for my YouTube recordings. It's a very useful feature to have. That being said, profiles. These things are extremely useful. All the settings we did over here, all of these settings where we set up the no stream key and the output and the audio device, all that lot, great, it's all useful stuff, but, but, what if we went differently? For example, this is a YouTube only. It does recording, it doesn't live stream. Well, we can say, duplicate the settings. Give me, yeah, that's how, that's how you saw Twitch. Give me a Twitch version, there's Twitch. Uh, we're we'll going to settings. Now, I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna say, give me the uh, UK server, and boom, a stream key. Here's what I copied earlier. <laughs> Apply that, it is in there now. I've got my outputs doing all these things over here. I'm going to drop that down to three megabits per second on the live streaming service. Hi. <laughs> and you can tweak all my settings in here about quality levels like recording. Now, I have a stream key. I can stream. I've got my bitrate on streaming at 3000. If I switch to the untitled one, which is my original, back to settings again. Hi. <laughs> I don't have a stream key anymore and my bitrate's for three five zero zero. So actually, now I've got one scene for streaming and one for recording. And by being in the one for recording, which we are in now on title, if I hit start streaming, yes, it's gonna try and connect and it never will. It, can't, it won't be able to make the connection. There's no stream key. Boom, couldn't activate, activate the channel. Or stream key, please double check your stream key. Couldn't do it, no stream key. However, this is the important part now. Switch over to Twitch, hit start streaming, press yes, tries to connect, connects, boom, start streaming. We are now streaming. Not a brilliant idea. Important here, drop frames. That means I'm broadcasting frames 30 frames a second at this bit rate over here for 3,200 per second. I haven't dropped, no, no frames have been dropped. I'm gonna actually stop that so people don't get confused and wonder why I'm live streaming. <laughs> Uh, that would confuse a few people. It's not live streaming day, that's tomorrow on Fridays. Um, but drop frames. Drop frames are basically, I send you 30 frames a second and you receive 30 frames a second. If I drop a frame, you don't get you don't receive one. Simple as that. But if I drop enough frames, you start to get buffering and stuttering at your end and that means you can't watch the stream because it's constantly buffering and constantly causing hassle. And I can solve that by lowering my bit rate because usually uploads rates got the issue or changing the server I'm sending them to. So the beneficial in both ways. But uh, as you saw down there, the uh, drop frames indicator tells you how many frames you drop. If you're streaming and your numbers are increasing and go above a certain percentage you think is happy, then you need to sort your bitrate out or sort your provider or change the ingest server something. If, you, if, if people complain about buffering, but you're not dropping any frames, the problem's at their end. It's as simple as that. The problem's either at Twitch, YouTube, or more likely, the individual person who's complaining about it than it is at your end. If you're not getting drop frames, drop frames at your end, non-drop frames at somebody else's end. Now, key thing about drop frames, well, non-drop frames. If people say, I'm getting buffering all the time, I can't watch your streams, and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Lower your bit rate. Chances are, their internet connection, you, you might be able to send up internet at three and a half megabits per second, but if they can't download at three and a half megabits per second, then, they can't receive what you're sending them. Unless you're partnered or you're using YouTube's uh, transcoding system, what you send is what they get. If they're using, if you've got transcoding through Twitch partnerships, through Twitch being very lucky, or YouTube system, then that person can lower their quality settings and get a lower bandwidth and it'll work for them at that point. But that's 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 the uh, whole thing about scenes. So we're in the default scene. Uh, we're using the profile Twitch. We can move back to the untitled scene and still in the default. So the scenes and the profiles are different. So you can actually be in your Twitch live streaming scene while recording and your recording scene while live streaming if you want to do that as well. And there are reasons why you want to do that. There are reasons. But uh, that will actually be the end of the series uh, about, well, in the episode, sorry, about uh, scene collections and profiles. I don't think we have anything else to cover. So if there's anything else you would like to see in the how to YouTube series, any other tools and stuff, I mean, I can show you the editing suite, but it's, it's particularly one tool and there's so many combinations of editing tools out there. And I'm not the best at editing, as you may as well notice in some places. <laughs> but uh, there you go, let me know. 
If there's anything else you'd like to see in the whole, we'd like to see how do I do something on YouTube, maybe some of the background analytics stuff and how to set up your channel up. I can do that kind of stuff. But these, this, this little mini series has all been about the tools you use every day. So yeah, if you'd like to see more about the other stuff, like the background of YouTube itself and the actual maintenance panels and stuff like that, let, drop a comment down, let me know, and I will do them as well. But until next time, comments in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And yes, I do do it every time. Told you that.